Do you own a home? What if I told you there was a way to get the IRS to help pay your mortgage? But not just your mortgage, I'm talking property taxes, insurance, and repairs. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's true. And not only is it true, but the wealthy have been doing it for years. But today, I'm going to peel back the curtain and give you the game that the gatekeepers have been holding back for decades. And not only that, but I'm gonna teach you how you can implement this in your life in 2024. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. What's up, family? Welcome back to another episode of Tax Free Living, where we teach entrepreneurs just like you how to live tax free. I'm your host, Carter Cofield, rocking our uh, new merch release, Normalized Black Wealth. Again, if you have, if you want the profit hat, the merch, just go to shop.melanamoney.com. But other than that, guys, we're going to get right into today's episode. We got a special episode because today we're going to be talking about how to write off your mortgage and get the IRS to help pay some of your bills. As we know, or at least as we've been told, the American dream is to purchase a home. But if you've ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I highly recommend you read, if you haven't, a home is not an asset. Your personal residence is actually a liability. A liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket every single month. And an asset is anything that puts money in your pocket every single month. So today we're gonna talk about not only how to be able to write off our living expenses, but how to turn our home from a liability into an asset. So normally if you purchase a home, you don't really save a lot of money on tax. Like there are only a few expenses related to your primary residence that are actually deductible in 2024. And those expenses are the mortgage interest that you pay, discount points that you uh, get at closing, uh, property taxes are tax deductible, and any interest that you might pay on a home equity line of credit or home equity loan. But get this, none of those expenses that I just stated are deductible unless you itemize on your taxes, which basically means the only way you get those deductions is if your itemized deductions in total are more than your standard deduction. And in 2024, the standard deduction, if you're single is $14,600. If you're married is $29,200. So think about this. If you're married, and you want to write off your expenses related to your primary residence, all the expenses in total have to be more than $29,200. And for a lot of us at home, that is not the case. So what am I saying? That I'm saying that due to that fact, a lot of you at home won't be able to write off any expenses related to your home. But I want to change that by giving you the strategy to how you can write off your expenses regardless of standard deductions or itemized deductions. What can we do to be able to enhance the deductions related to our primary residence, right? And be able to properly write off our mortgage and our home related expenses on our taxes. Okay. There are two strategies we're going to discuss today. The first one you probably heard of and the second one, I guarantee you haven't heard of. Okay. So, um, the first strategy that we're going to talk about is called house hacking. Okay, some of y'all are familiar with this, but other of you all aren't, so I'm gonna explain. The theory of house hacking is you buy, let's say, a two flat property, a two story building um, where it has two units, right? And you live in one of the units, right? Let's say it's a two bedroom, one bath. You live in one of those units, and then the other unit you rent out to a third party. The beauty of this is when you buy your first home, because you're living in half of it or a part of it, you can still take advantage of the FHA loan, which is three and a half percent down on a purchase, right? I bought a three flat property in Chicago, three and a half percent down. And it was, uh, so I, and it was a $500,000 building. And I only had to bring like $28,000 in closing to closing. So for $28,000 in exchange, I got a $500,000 building. Okay. So if I can do it, you can do it too. Now let's say you live in one unit and you run out the other unit. Why, why is this beneficial? One, because the money that you make from the, uh, the, from the unit that you're renting out could pay for the mortgage on the entire building. So again, an asset is something that's bringing money in our pocket every single month. By renting out the second unit, you're bringing money into your pocket every single month. And that money should be able to cover most, if not all of the mortgage. So guess what? 
now you're living for free or you're living for a lot cheaper than you would have been living before. But that's not all, right? Because we're not here just for the income, we're here for the tax savings. So due to the fact that you're renting out half of your home, the IRS now sees you as a business owner because you are you're a landlord what's up family are you ready to make more in 2024 i'm talking make more money pay less taxes and get access to more capital if so i want you to join our 100 free masterclass where we're going to be teaching you all of these strategies so you can keep more money in your pocket and you can make your money make money for you so if you want to be a part of this amazing free class all you have to do is click the link below and save your spot the problem is we only have 50 seats so i will pause this episode go register and come back to it after so that you can save your seat for this master class other than that I'll see you inside the class. Let's get back to the episode. And if it's one thing I've been preaching from day one is that the IRS rewards entrepreneurs and investors, right? If you want to, if you want to win the tax game, you need to get on the right side of how things work. You need to get on the right team. And the tax code was created for entrepreneurs and investors. So now that you are a business owner, believe it or not, you unlock one of the most powerful code sections in the IRS tax code, which is IRS code section 162A, which states, if you have a business or you're an investor, any expense that is both ordinary and necessary to operate that business is now tax deductible to you. So let's say you have to repair the, water, the hot water heater in your home. Is that ordinary and necessary to keep that tenant in the other unit? Absolutely. So now the repairs associated with our home are now deductible up to the percent of business use. If we have a two flat building, that means 50% of its personal use, 50% of its business use. So now we're able to write off 50% of all the repairs on the home, but not just the repairs, right? Would you agree that our mortgage interest is ordinary and necessary to operate our business? If we don't pay the mortgage, we don't have the building. So now we get to write off 50% of our mortgage interest every single month. And let me let y'all in on a little secret, okay? I don't know if y'all ever like looked at your, your mortgage statement, but for the first five years, three to five years of your mortgage, it is over 90% interest. The first three to five years of your mortgage is about 90% interest. Only 10% goes to principal. So if your, if your mortgage is $1,000 a month, 900 of that is interest. And guess what? In this scenario, you're, you're writing off $450 a month in tax deductible expenses. So now we get to write off 50% of repairs, 50% of mortgage interest, 50% of our homeowner's insurance, which can be expensive. We get to write off 50% of our HOA fees. We get to write off 50% of all the utilities for the building. These can total up to be a lot of money in tax deductible expenses. But not only that, the biggest expense of them all is we get to write off 50% of the depreciation on our property, okay? So how do you calculate depreciation on your property? You take the value of your property minus the land, right? So let's say you had a $600,000 property and the land was 100,000. So now you have $500,000 of building value. Divide that by 27 and a half. 500,000 divided by 27 and a half is a little over 18 grand, right? That is your annual depreciation deduction. You don't have to spend no money. The IRS says because your building is, has wear and tear, you get to get a depreciation deduction. So in our case, we get to write off 50% of this 18,000. So that's $9,000 on top of our mortgage interest, property taxes, HOA fees, uh, repairs, um, a utility, all that. So now we can be looking at ten, multiple tens of thousands of dollars in tax deductible expenses related to our home. So taking advantage of this strategy and taking advantage of house hacking is a way that you can get 10, 20, $30,000 in tax deductible expenses, not to mention make money from your primary residence. Now, I know, I know, I hear you all. Some of y'all like, well, Carter, I don't got a two flat. I got a single family home and I don't want no stranger living in my basement, walking around naked and eating my, eating my cereal in the morning, right? I don't wanna do that. So now, now what are my options, right? So I told you I got two strategies for you. So let's talk about strategy number two. What if instead of renting your home to someone to live in, 
What if you rented your home for someone's stuff to live in? Carter, what are you talking about? Well, as Americans, a lot of us have too much stuff. We're hoarders. That is why storage facilities is a billion dollar industry, right? Because we get too much stuff and then we have to put it away in storage because it can't fit in our home. So what if I told you that there was a way for you to turn a, a portion of your home into a storage facility and you have no overhead costs to do so? Wouldn't that be crazy? Well, I'm here to tell you there is a website called neighbor.com. Everybody write this off. Everybody write this down. Neighbor.com. Neighbor.com is a website that links people in your neighborhood that have too much stuff with other people in your neighborhood that have extra available space. So think about this. Let, let's say you got a single family home, but you got a lot of room in your basement, right? You can go to neighbor.com and you can find people in your neighborhood that will pay you to put your stuff put their stuff in your basement. So now let's say you get um, two people to put stuff in your basement via neighbor.com. Each person pays you $500 a month. Now you're making $1,000 a month for renting out your basement, not to another person, but to another person's stuff. And according to the IRS tax code, that means that the portion of your basement that you're renting out is now, that portion is now tax deductible to you. So let's say that you rent out your entire basement and your basement represents 25% of your entire home. That means that 25% of your home is now a business. Therefore, you get to write off 25% of all expenses associated with living there. So now you get to write off 20, again, 25% of your mortgage interest, 25% of your utilities, 25% of your repairs, 25% of HOA fees, 25% of depreciation, right? and you don't gotta worry about another person living in your home. What's up family? If it's one thing that I know is true is that you can survive without community, but you can't thrive without community. And in order to build true community, you have to get in the right room with the right people. And so we wanted to create that room especially for you. This is why we have Wealth Weekend. This is gonna be a weekend experience where you're gonna get amazing education, amazing experiences and amazing entertainment all in one weekend so you can become that first generation millionaire in your family because one thing i stand on is generational curses ran in my family until they ran into me so my question is are you going to be that curse breaker for your family and if you want to you need to join wealth weekend so click the link below and we'll see you there and let's get back to the episode and this is so powerful because even w2 employees can do this right y'all know i harp on tax strategies for business owners. But if you're a W-2 employee and you decide to rent out your basement to someone or rent out your spare room to someone's stuff, bring an extra thousand dollars a month cash flow, and then end up saving tens of thousands of dollars in taxes at the same time. Do y'all see the power of this strategy? So that is how you can legally write off your primary residence and get the IRS to help pay for your mortgage and all other expenses, okay? Now, if you like today's episode, I need you to hit that like button. I need you to hit that subscribe button. And please share this with somebody that you love and be a blessing to somebody on this Friday. Other than that, I'll see you all next time.